Hello and welcome back aboard the cockpit of the F-A-18 Hornet. We're continuing to run through the flight school campaign that I developed for this aircraft. Uh, today's mission is going to be CCIP. Uh, I'm not going to waste a bunch of time. Let's just go ahead and get into it. Links to the welcome files back. are in the description. Hope you had a good weekend. The last style of bombing we have to learn is also the most difficult, as it requires manually diving at a target and releasing dumb bombs. The long name is Continuously Computed Impact Point, but we just call it CCIP. The Sorry, I need to take a second to look at the briefing to see what we need. We are looking for rock eyes. So times two rock eyes, times two Mark 82s, and times two... Oh, there's a bunch of bombs on here. The way it works is by projecting a crosshair on the ground to show you where the bomb will hit if you release it at that point. It does this by computing your angle to the ground, airspeed, and numerous other factors. All you really need to know is, put crosshair on target, press button. While it sounds simple here on the ground, it requires a bit of technique to master it. You need to maintain a lot of altitude to give yourself room to dive down and release your weapon before you descend to the point where enemy anti-aircraft guns can shoot you down. You also want to stay high enough that you have time to flare off any heat-seeking missiles that units nearby may have, including shoulder-fired variants you won't see yes. until there's smoke heading toward you. As a result, we're going to head out to the range and practice the technique for this. Since we only have limited capacity, some issues, we'll forego seat game practice for this flight and just do. focus um, on dropping bombs. Go ahead and get equipped per the mission loadout. Then this get into the air and head for waypoint one. This is going to be a pod. A Don't forget pod. to turn on your FLIR, align your HMD, and activate your countermeasures. This is going to be the big bomb. The mode for all your weapons should be CCIP, okay. and all fuse this options, is going both to be mechanical the and electrical, to should be set to the first available. Um, dumb bomb. Where's the... Uh... Mark 83, right? <laughs> I think that's right. Um, and then for this one, we'll do the snake eyes, or rock eyes, sorry. And for this one, we'll do the, whatever the smaller, is there, and then we'll do the sidewinders. Unfortunately, I can't go back and look at the briefing. Request refueling. Let me just double check and make sure that's correct. Um, okay. Rock eyes, 500 pounds. Mark 83, 1,000 pounds, and a 2,000. I think that's correct. So we're just waiting for this to all pop up. Okay, rock eyes. We're going to do mo mode CCIP fuse primary. All of these are going to be the same. CCI CCIP fuse instant. Mode CCIP fuse nose nose and CCIP. Just double check and make sure I didn't screw these up. Nose. I want nose on all of those. Alright, cool. And then I believe he told me to go ahead and get in the air and start heading to waypoint one, right? Countermeasures. Mm -mm -mm. Go ahead and get equipped and then get in the air to head point. Okay, that's like, I was too busy trying to focus on all these other things that I was trying to get done. I wasn't paying attention to what he was saying. So, you know, it is what it is. And away we go. Oh, oh, oh. Fix that in a second. I can't focus on that right this minute. I have to manually raise my landing gear because my the button I use for that isn't working anymore. Get our 
flaps going up. And we can get this set up to our SA page. And then waypoint navigation, waypoint one sequence. Couple the autopilot to that. Pull our throttle back to the point where we're not using afterburner anymore. Get this set up, get this set up for our EW page just so we can keep an eye on that. Times 10 uh, moving forward. Okay, let's talk about how we execute our bombing. First, set your master arm in air ground mode, then select the Mark 83 from the stores page. 1,000 pound bombs are a good option for heavily armored vehicles such as tanks. The first thing you need to keep in your head before executing a CCIP attack is that you need plenty of altitude. You need to be at least 10,000 feet to give yourself room, but preferably you want to be closer to 15,000 if weather allows. The higher you are when you start, the higher you'll be when you drop your bomb, and the higher you can pull out of the climb and avoid enemy anti-aircraft weaponry. Take a look at the left side of your cockpit where the canopy bow meets the sidewall. Visualize a target on the ground passing through the left side of the canopy bow and sliding a few inches above the sidewall of the cockpit. When planning a CCIP bombing run, you want to try to set yourself up so that your target presents you with this visual. To do this, once you find and ID the target, you'll give yourself some room to maneuver, if necessary, then approach the target at a slight angle. You don't want to approach head-on because eventually the target will slide under the nose of the aircraft and you won't be able to judge your attack run. Turn yourself to the right far enough that the target will eventually appear as I described a moment ago. To help you out, we've placed your first target, the tank, in about the spot where you would need to see it if you just follow the flight path to waypoint 2, assuming you're on the flight path line. As you approach the waypoint, you can look down to your left to actually see what I'm talking about. Make sure you're at about 15,000 feet. To start your bombing, wait until the target passes through the canopy bow, then roll left until you're inverted and you have to look straight up to see the target, then pull up toward it until you're pointed at it and roll wings level. Idle the throttle. Once you're settled, Wait for an X-shaped crosshair to appear at the bottom of the steering line, at which point you can steer yourself until the X is right on the tank and then press the weapon release button to send it. I have my volume control stuck in my the face now. The last part is the U-shaped icon, which is there to help prevent you from getting away. damaged by your own explosions. If you keep your velocity vector above that point, you can be sure that you won't blow yourself up with your own bombs, so try to keep the vector above that. Okay. So that was a lot, so go over it in your head while we head to waypoint 2. Okay, it did run away. Let me get my SA page up. I didn't mean to do that. Alright, so we'll fast forward to getting to this part. Drop a couple bombs. Do 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 do. We've marked it with red smoke. Be sure. The weapon is selected and armed. It's over there. You can see you the can target see coming up on your left side. Cause... You're at about 15,000 feet. Once the tank passes through the canopy bow, roll inverted to bring the tank above you. Pull up to point at the tank. Roll wings level. Dive until you see the X, then put it on the tank. Use weapon release to send it, then immediately pull up. Once you're climbing, roll left or right and look at the tank to verify the kill. I'll also give you verbal confirmation. Good luck. All right. So yeah, I did my best to try to line things up so that all you can, all you have to do, especially for people who don't know what they're doing, you can just autopilot to the waypoint, and it'll basically put you in the position so you can get that first time visual of seeing what it needs to look like before you dive in on your target. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn the autopilot off so that I don't have it interfering with me when I'm trying to do things. Tank. 
Excellent. If you got it with your first bomb, we have another tank you can hit, which is now marked with another red smoke. Once that's dealt with, or you don't have any more Mark 83s, look for the orange smoke where we've placed a group of trucks. Approach them in exactly the same way, except this time use your Mark 20 Rakai, which is a sort of cluster munition that spreads out over a large area. I'm just this gonna, is great I'm for infantry or unarmored vehicles like trucks. You don't We've have given to you two to practice with, so make a couple of runs on the trucks and do your best to take them all out. All right, there's our orange smoke there. Let's get some, uh, let's get some altitude. Maybe, if I can actually pay attention. Trying to speed things up a little bit, because uh, it can get kind of boring just watching this stuff, watching us fly around. Last up is a building, which needs your 2,000 pound Mark 84 and is marked with blue smoke. CCIP bombing is always the same, so do what you just did, just this time use the big boy. Okay. Up and around we go. I'm just going to do it from the right this time because I don't feel like going all the way around to try to figure out getting it to the left. Plenty of practice over the rest of the course, because this is something that requires a perishable skill. We're getting close to the point of simulating real-world ground attacks, so be proud of what you've accomplished so far. Egress to waypoint 3, then return to the carrier. Okay, we're going to switch over to the HSI so that we can use navigation-related stuff. Cells on the way back. So if you've been watching the rest of these missions, uh, every time we finish a mission, we head back to the airfield and practice a case three recovery. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, Tachyon is 22, X-ray, turn that on. BRC is going to be 129 for that particular field. And then, um, away we go. Yo, what are you doing? I don't... What's going on here? Okay, I have a really wicked roll to the left. Or to the right, sorry. A really wicked roll to the left, right. Okay, dude. 50 miles. Report inbound. At 10 miles, you should be at 2,000 foot AGL and 250 knots. Alright, maybe now I can actually do that. I know it's a, I know it's unrealistic to waste bombs that way, but I just it's annoying when I'm trying to do things and the trim just will not help me. Alright. Get our 
ourselves coupled to the Doop doop do. Make sure the course line shows up. I always forget that you can do that. Autopilot will set you up to the course line there. Okay, start slowing down. All of our autopilots turned off. Get our radar alt uh, radar altimeter turned on so we can do that. push it back up so we can do this part and now we're just going to do the carrier landing but it's okay. Still need to bring it. Well, I don't know. The problem is, is that uh, the rolling ground here makes it to where trying to uh, trying to use 600 and 600 feet as your reference doesn't really work because it's just constantly going up and down. do manual throttle for this because I don't know I seem I find it a little bit easier than trying to move move the velocity vector around with the stick Not technically supposed to look uh, before the 90 degree mark, but for this, because I'm because uh, we don't have an angled deck, I don't necessarily make a big deal out of that. Start descending a little bit more. Mostly, I'm just trying to make sure we don't get the runaway throttle effect that sometimes happens when you make the sharp when you when you turn sharper than 30 degrees, because you end up having to add a lot more throttle. And then the uh, then the e bracket kind of starts running away from you and becomes unrecoverable. So sometimes you got to do that. And this should be pretty good. A little high, but not bad. Good trap. Okay, not. You know, I don't do the best case one patterns, so, you know, part of it is just I don't have the, I don't personally have the accuracy down, and then part of it is just the fact that the, the joystick that I'm using is really not good for what we're doing here. It, it's overly resistant, it's hard to get precise adjustments because the spring tension is really high, so, you know, it's just, 
I have to do like jerky movements, to, jerky tiny movements to get precision stuff to happen. So, you know, at some point I'm going to get a better joystick again. And uh, ideally, maybe that'll be make things a little bit easier for me. But for now, you know, just got to kind of do what we got to do. That's why I have such a hard time keeping the velocity vector on the horizon as we're doing that steep turn to the left. Because there's just, there's a very, there's a very small window of being able to just make slight adjustments of, in your rolls to the left and right while you're pulling back on the stick. And the tension on this Extreme 3D Pro is just, you know, it's high enough that it makes that very difficult to do. So that's part of it, but a lot of it is just, you know, I don't practice it enough. So lack of practice combined with having to fight the hardware creates that situation. But anyways... Um, that's going to do it for today's episode. We are going to go ahead and finish doing, going through all of this from verifying that it advances to the next mission, but that's, uh, that's it for the mission. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, subscribe to help us reach 10,000 subscribers. Join as a member for early access to videos, among other perks, or you can just leave YouTube's version of a tip with a thank you. Good job. Uh, or there's also a PayPal link in the description if you'd like to go outside of the YouTube ecosystem to uh, contribute to the channel. So again, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to come back for the next episode, and I'll see you then.